Santa, where's your car for? I need a little wooden door dog. Coming right up, Santa. For today's build, we are going to build a little toddler's push wooden trike, like a ride-on trike. I went online and I found some uh, other push-on trikes so I could get the dimensions that I would need. And then I found this little tiny wooden dog and I thought, wow, it's really cute. It was a pull-along toy and I liked its design, so I'm gonna make it larger like the push trike. First thing I needed was some wheels. So I went on to Amazon and I grabbed four of these wheels here. Besides that, the only other thing we're gonna need for this build is wood and paint. So let's get started. Now I'm just gonna draw inspiration from this little toy dog, so I'm not gonna scale it up in the computer. Instead, I'm gonna look at the dimensions and then freehand draw it. It turns out the wheels were a great guide for the curved parts on the dog. And then I also made sure and left a flat area on the dog's back for where the seat's gonna go later. I made the body from three parts. First, I drew one side of the body, which includes the front leg and cut it out twice. Next, I used it to help me draw the inner part of the dog, which includes the head, body, rear leg, and tail. I used two pieces of wood because I didn't have one big enough, but you can make it out of one. Then I glued one of the sides to the main body. I've clamped these two pieces here together while I went and had a little bit of coffee so that they would dry. I mean, you should let wood clamps like this dry overnight or for a few hours at least, but it'll be good enough. It's been an hour. Glued together our one side of the dog and the middle. Now I need to put the other one on. I'm gonna apply some wood glue. Very liberal as long as it comes out of that. Glue, don't fight me. Very liberal-like. Going through there. Okay, so once I think I've got enough glue, which looks like it should be about that much, I'm gonna take my glue brush here, just like a paintbrush. I'm gonna paint it on this way, giving me full coverage everywhere I'm gonna have glue. Take the other side, line her up, drop her on, wiggle a little bit, give it a wiggle. Wiggle a little bit. Clamp, clamp. The head and the tail are in the middle and the dog has two sides. They're not lined up perfect here, but that's okay because I'm gonna go back and when I sand and, and uh, grind it down, it'll become one solid piece of wood. So with wood, when it's drying, you never really can have enough clamps because it pretty much wants equal pressure. So we have clamps everywhere, good pressure. Okay, so I'm just tracing the tail using my scraps here. There's my tail. There's my back feet. <clears throat> so I need two of these and two of these. Okay, let's go cut those out. Cut. Here's my tail pieces. Wag it, wag it. Little tail. Little dog tail. Okay. The wheels are turning in the bus and they help me decide what to do. I'm glad you're here for all the commentary, folks. Why do I have the safety glasses on? Just saying I'm inside because I know I was bending down and I could see myself go, bah, ah, and I didn't want to do that. Everything is glued up on this side. Oh, gonna let it sit for about 30 minutes, then I'll come back, glue the other side up, and then we'll be ready to do the next sand. Yes. While the glue dries, I'm gonna go make the seat. We're recording. Okay. Oh, there was grease on there. We have the birth of a dog. A little, little dog. I think it kind of looks like a dachshund or some sort of wiener dog. Is a dachshund a wiener dog? I think it is. According to Wikipedia, the dachshund, also known as the wiener dog, badger dog, or sausage dog, is a short-legged, long-bodied, hound-type dog breed. I'm gonna cut some dowels to about an inch um, and put them into the seat, then drill them down in and We'll put a dowel straight through the ears, right through the dog's brain. And then we'll put these little balls on the end to make sure that 
if my little niece does fall, she doesn't get hurt on the end of the dowel. It's just a nice soft ball there. So those go there. Those are the next two steps we're gonna do. Put on the handlebars, mount the seat. Let's get going. What are we gonna call you, puppy dog? No, no, no. Drilled two holes in the top. Got my dowels in the bottom of here. And there we go. Remember, anytime we glue anything, we need to put a little bit of pressure. So we'll leave this clamp for just a little bit. Wait, do three clamps. Nope, just one clamp will do because right in the center and the way this will work, it should be but fine. I thought there's never enough clamps. Yeah, there is never enough clamps. You are correct. How's that? Yeah. I'm glad you agree, camera girl. So the first thing I've done is drilled a really, really tiny pilot hole. So I'm gonna take a piece of tape and I'm gonna put it over the wood. This, believe it or not, helps the wood from splintering apart. I'm gonna drill once from this side. I'm just gonna go down like a uh, half an inch. Then I'll come to the other side, put the drill in, and then continue through. So by starting on each side and by putting tape, I'll make sure that I don't splinter up the wood, especially since this is birch ply and it's not a solid piece. Trying to grab this ball while I bring this down is probably just gonna mean that this is gonna like launch off and it might hurt my hand. It's pretty dangerous. So what I'm gonna try and do Let's hold it with a clamp. May or may not work, we'll see. There's also a little circle here which is gonna help me to kinda of hold it down into this. See how that worked? It looks really good. And I'll be able to slide the handlebar in here and glue it on. You may also have noticed there's another hole back here. The reason for that one, I'm gonna put these little balls. It won't stick out, but it'll be flush. Just like this, the balls are here. She likes to just push things so she can just grab them back here and just push the dog rather than sit on it. So it'll be a push and a ride on toy. <laughs> so put two marks to make sure that when I insert this, I know that it's centered. So I'm just gonna put glue in there on both sides. Try to get it on. Dad, there's glue on the other side. There is, it's dropping down its ear. Hang on, we'll get that. We're gonna need a little help here, a little mallet. Oh, no. Yes, because it's tight. Dad, it's uneven. Oh yeah, you're right. I went a little too far. Yeah. Hmm. Good call, camera girl. Three. Three. It's right on. <sighs> what we have to do. <laughs> what we have to do now is we need to wipe off all this extra glue. Whew! That got me all winded. Just put a little bit on the end here. I'm gonna squeeze these on now. Just one more tiny hit. And then, and our dog, oh, he's looking almost like a little toy. He's got little handlebars that are so cute. A little baby. But he needs a face and a mouth. He will have a face and a mouth. Huh? Oh, little doggy, what color do you want to be, little doggy? What do you want to look like, doggy? Hmm? Oh, oh, it's such a good doggy. It's such a good doggy. It's such a good doggy. Good doggy. So here I am staining this guy. And if any of you who know anything about staining know that I'm putting far too much on and I'm not wiping it off fast enough. I should have done some research before I did it. I haven't stained anything in quite a while. And I hate it. <laughs> Uh, do not like the way this came out. Not a big deal. Usually I always paint things and I went back and forth on this one. Do I paint it? Do I stain it? Even then, I think in the end I might not have liked the stain. I have a cat at the door just scratching, scratching, scratching. Stop kittens. Let's catch up to where we are with the paint process so far. We've done two coats of flat primer white, sanded, and then gone back and filled in some of the little imperfections. Two more coats of flat primer white, sanded again. 
Then from that point on, I put this solstice blue. It has dried for 24 hours. Now I'm gonna tape off everything and spray the red. Get that red. Charge the burns. First coat of red is done. Maybe two more coats. We'll let this dry real quick. Hey mom, what's up? I'm filming something, can I call you right? Yeah. You're not gonna move now. But you bought a house. You're not buying the house. Are you serious? Camera girl, are you hearing this? Are you hearing what your grandma's saying? Someone wants to talk to you. Grandma, you have to move. Do you know what will become of me without you? This is me, 15 years from now, about to discover the secrets of the Gravitron. It would be the world's greatest discovery. That is, until I learned my grandmother wasn't gonna move. Without Grandma 15 years from now, things were different. Ha 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 ha, who has all the cookies now? After the red dried for a whole night, we have dots everywhere. Now, I went and took my cry cut printer and on one sheet of vinyl, I printed a whole bunch of circles of different sizes. I then stuck them on here because it would be really hard to freehand tape circles everywhere. So, place those all over, taped her up. Now I'm gonna go out, spray on his little yellow-orange dots. Yes! You're getting close, Papa! The orange paint's done. Now I'm gonna add little eyeballs here, and I've made them out of white gloss vinyl. Just because they're a tiny, tiny detail. I really don't want to mask off all that. Well, that looks good. Now I'm gonna put some little eyeballs and a little smile. I have a little black eyeball dot here. Put them in a position so it looks like the pup is looking up at its little owner. So I created all of these in Photoshop and then brought them over to the Cricut machine. And there we go. Doggy's got a little smile. It's a little eyes. Oh, look at the little doggy, it's so cute. Couple coats of clear to protect everything in. Let that dry for 24 hours. It's the final stage now. All I have to do is put the wheels on. So to do this, I put some masking tape on the front and the back side of the legs to protect them while I drill it. And what this also allows me to do is when I put this ruler on the table, I can just draw a line front and rear, which I've done. That gives me about a one inch reference up from the bottom. I will find the center of the legs, make a mark front and rear, and that's where I'll drill my holes on the drill press. I'm testing with this one, two, three block. If the drill bit is square, and I'm gonna slowly pre-drill a smaller hole than the final hole. Okay. I also put cardboard down to make sure I didn't scratch it and I put more tape on the other side. Now all I have to do is continue drilling it to where it's about a 5 16th inner diameter and that'll match up with the axle. Using the bandsaw, I've cut down my front and rear axles. I have all my spacers here. I also sanded the ends to make it easier to slide through so nothing would get grab. So I have two 5 16 push caps. I'm gonna take one right now, put it on the end of the axle. So I put it on this block of wood, line up my axle nice and square, and push it in. Okay, this is not coming off. And this is how most toy axles are put on. Next up, I'm gonna take a 5 16 washer, slot it over it. Take the front wheel, which has bearings in it. They're greased bearings. They're for, I think, large roller braid wheels. I got them off Amazon. An affiliate link will be below. Slide the wheel on, then another 5 16 washer. Then for the front, I have a 3 quarter 5 16 spacer. Then another 5 16 washer. We're going to slide the axle through. Boom. And on the other side, you guess it, a 5 16 washer, 5 16 spacer, 5 16 washer, the wheel, another 5 16 washer, 
and we'll put the little cap nut here, is on. And the wheel spin freely with these being tight because they have their own bearings. The little push toy is completed! Time to package this up, throw it in Santa's bag, and off it goes to little Miss Waverly so she can open it on Christmas morning. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, um, go ahead and do the usual like, but all that kind of stuff. Put a comment below. Visit my Patreon if I've set one up by now. There'll be a link below. Um, I really appreciate it. I hope you appreciated watching me build this. Um, and I hope you go out and try. Try to do something of your own. And remember, mistakes happen all the time when you're building things. It's the joy of building things, and that's why we do it, is to learn. Talk to you later. We have finished our toy. This gives me so much joy. We are done. It's time to clean the workshop and get started again. What should we build next, Dougie? I don't know. Maybe we'll build a rocket jetpack. That seems like a good idea. Let's build a jetpack. Yes.